Good day, it's Tony Fortunato from the technology firm. So today we are going to look at Microsoft's NetSH command. So for all you networking people, the Wireshark, Cisco, Wireless, and all the regular people who are on my YouTube channel and articles, don't clue out yet. This is something you may find helpful. This is not something for server administrators and PC technicians alike. This could benefit almost anybody anywhere. So hang in there and just, just check this out. So what am I talking about? So many times I need a simple, consistent way to do some work. I am comfortable at the command line and I write the occasional script. So I thought it would be helpful to share some tips, tricks using Microsoft's NetSH. I wanted to pick an example of what I used SH for. As you get into it, you'll see there are tons of stuff you can do with NetSH. Just because you're a network person doesn't mean you shouldn't be familiar with some Microsoft or Android or Linux or whatever commands. Uh, don't be afraid to go to the command line interface. Don't be afraid to do some commands. As long as the commands are non-destructive, you know, you can have fun with that. So what is NetSH? NetSH. So the URL is up here. I'm going to put that in the article, the written piece. And it's command line scripting utility. It comes with Microsoft, so you don't have to download anything. It's just, it's there. Uh, if you type NetSH by itself, then you'll be in a shell and you'll have to do some commands and whatnot. But I'm giving you the whole syntax so you can just kind of copy paste and have fun with that. The key here is NetSH, there's kind of like two parts to any command, right? There's the part that just retrieves information or reads stuff. And that you can do in a regular command prompt. But if you want to change something, change your IP address, your routing table, your DNS, your default gateway, your subnet map, all that. If you want to change anything, if you want to write anything, then you typically have to be in the command prompt as an administrator. So when you find the command prompt, wherever it happens to be on your machine, just right click and then run as administrator. On some systems, it all depends how your computer is set up at work or even at home. Uh, sometimes you have to do everything as administrator and sometimes uh, it's locked down and you cannot even run the command prompt as administrator. So you'll find out as you play with your system. Here's the NetSH syntax. Now there's a, there's a lot to it. I don't want to be just overwhelm you right off the bat. We're just going to play with something specific. But if you do want to just take a look at it, you'll see that there's there's lots of stuff you can actually do with NetSH. First thing you want to do is find out the name of your adapter. Now, what I've done with my adapter in previous videos is I've actually renamed my adapter. So it doesn't say Ethernet or local area network, that kind of thing. It actually says something more descriptive. For example, I have Wi-Fi for my Wi-Fi adapter. Killer is my Ethernet, my LAN, my hardwired port on my computer. So that just makes it easier for me. Now, if you want to see your interface information on your computer, you can do an IP config, right? But this is a, a lot cleaner, nicer way. And there's some information you normally don't see uh, fairly easily with IP config. So if I type NetSH interface IPv4, that's the key here. This is only for IPv4, this command, right? You can do 6 as well, but this is just for IPv4. Show config, or alternatively, you can use this command as well. And in my control panel under network connections, you can see this is where I renamed my adapters. It's also helpful when I use things like Wireshark, right? It just gives you a better descriptive name. To rename it, just kind of right click on it, rename, and, and you've renamed the adapter, and that's pretty well it. Once you know the name of the adapter, so if it is something less obvious like local area interface one or something like that, just you have to know what adapter you're dealing with. So just look at the IP address and that usually tips off, you know, which adapter is really on your network. NetSH IPv4 global information is for the people that uh, get into protocol analysis or application baselining and they want a little bit more information about the, in this case, IP stack. And these just just a few more uh, bits of information. You normally have to dig through the registry, but it's presented a little easier on the screen. So you might find that helpful. The big thing people like to do is disable or enable an adapter. And that falls under a lot of categories. So for example, my lab work. If I want to simulate a computer flipping from Ethernet to Wi-Fi, instead of pulling my cable in and out all the time, I can just run it, write a script that disables my Ethernet port, for example, and copies a file or pings or do whatever I want it to do. The, the goal of this is if I can actually have a command line, then I can actually write a simple DOS batch file or a bash or whatever scripting language you want to use. Uh, the point is, it's a command. You just type it out. 
So NetSH, INT, set interface, name, and here's the gotcha, right? So I left this in here for a reason. These double quotes. In this case, my adapter is called killer. Well, in, this would not work, believe it or not. I have to take these double quotes out because killer, the name of my adapter, has no spaces in it. Now, if you did have a space in it, local area network three, you would have to put double quotes around all that kind of stuff. Admin equals disabled. So this is an example of a command you need to be uh, in the command prompt as the administrator, right? You can't just run this in a regular command prompt. If you do try to do that in a regular command prompt, it says the requested operation requires elevation, run as administrator, that sort of thing. If you want to disable your Ethernet adapter, um, I'm sorry, if you want to enable, <laughs> I just said the same thing twice. If you want to enable the Ethernet adapter, you simply change admin equals disable to admin equals enabled, and then that turns it back on again. So that's a, a very common thing that I'm asked for, for a multitude of reasons, but for now, uh, I'll just leave it at that, okay? Now, if you are familiar with NetStat and the NetStat output, it's very helpful with NetStat to see what you're talking to, what protocols, um, port numbers, that sort of thing. Now, if you don't like the output from NetStat, then you can use this alternative command, NetSH interface IPv4 show TCP connections, all one word. That comes up with this, I'm going to say, nicely formatted table. So that's a an interesting way to look at it because um, I'm telling you right now, when I when you look at NetStat and you're not familiar with it, your eyes kind of dance all over the place. This is kind of easier to look at my opinion for my eyeballs. If you want to do the same thing with UDP, then just change the word TCP to UDP connections and you get the same type of output. If you want to change your IP address, right? This, again, this is IPv4. If you want to change your IP address, in this case, I want to change to a static IP of this, with that mask and that gateway on a specific interface. And here's the, here's the key here. I want to make this a permanent change, right? Because sometimes you want to make a temporary change, but in most cases you want it permanent. So I'm just going to stick with that example. And the reason why I put persistent in brackets is because that's what's in the actual command. Don't forget to use the double quotes around your interface name if it has spaces in it. Mine does not. So don't, don't be fooled by that. You probably have to put double quotes unless you rename your interface. NetSH, interface, IPv4, set address, name equals, in my case, killer, that's my local area network, static, because I'm making a static IP address, that's my IP address, that's my mask, and that's my default gateway, and store equals persistent, and that will take effect as soon as you press enter. The second part of it is you're going to say, well, I need a DNS as well, right? Can I just put that up here? No. So there's a separate command for DNS and you'll see it right here. In this case, I'm making it 8888 primary. And this is the syntax for one DNS, and that's pretty well what you can do with this command. If you want a second DNS, that's another command you would have to add, but this is good enough for now. And lastly, if you want to go from static back to DHCP, you simply set address name killer source DHCP. That's the IP version of it. And then you do the same thing for the DNS servers part of it as well. It's a bit of a mistake. I notice when people get into this, they forget that these are separate. So when you want to put it back to DHCP, you have to put that back to DHCP if you want your DNS to be assigned via DHCP. So now here's an example, right? I want to manually configure my IP address and DNS because I'm on a customer network. This happens all the time. And I don't want to have to remember the IP every time I go or if I'm running around back and forth, it becomes a bit of a pain. I'm going to create a simple batch file, 192.192.192 static.bat. You can call it anything you want, right? DMZ, chicken breast, it doesn't matter, whatever you want to call it. Net SH interface, so on and so on for the IP address, the mask, the gateway, store persistent, makes it permanent. And then the same deal with DNS. And then at the end of it, I want to ping my router as well to make sure all is well. So I'm going to ping the actual router. So what that does for me is it changes the IP, assigns my DNS settings, and then pings the router. So all I have to do is run the batch file, and that's it. Uh, when you really get comfortable, you just create a little shortcut in a folder, call it Acme for the name of the customer, and you can have all your static or DHCP settings and simple little commands. Click, click, done. You don't have to download any utilities or third-party apps, which some people can't do anyways. So this is just a very, very simple, efficient way of working on your network. So I hope that helped. Have a good day. Bye for now.